Hey there, guys. Uh, this is Cole. I want to welcome you guys back to another movie review. I know I reviewed the Jurassic Park movies, but I wanted to go more in depth with the movies. And, you know, I wanted to go more in depth with the movies, so I decided to delete my old reviews uh, and go more in depth because I feel like there's more I had to say about each of the movies. So, uh, it's exactly what I'm going to do. And <sighs> where did it go? Uh, sorry, uh, today I'm gonna be reviewing, oh, that's where I put it, <laughs> sorry about that, uh, today I'm gonna be reviewing the first one, Jurassic Park, released in 1993, directed by Steven Spielberg, who did many iconic movies, uh, he did Jaws, uh, the Indiana Jones movies, E.T., the extraterrestrial, uh, Schindler's List, uh, Schindler's List is a fantastic one, it came out the same year this did, uh, Saving Private Ryan is really good, Catch Me If You Can, that's easily top three favorite Steven Spielberg movies for me, I'll have to do a video someday on my top ten favorite Steven Spielberg movies, but, uh, spoilers, this is my favorite movie, so obviously it'd be number one, but, uh, now, before I get into the review itself, I want to talk about some of the production troubles this movie had and overall how uh, and what the overall outcome was. So, J Steven Spielberg was not the first director on hand to do this movie. Uh, James Cameron, the director of Terminator, Terminator 2, uh, Aliens, The Abyss, True Lies, and even Titanic, which James Cameron directed... He was actually supposed to be the original choice to direct Jurassic Park. James Cameron, the Titanic director and Terminator director, was the original choice to direct this movie. And in his version, he wanted to be this big-budget, rated-R monster movie, blowing up dinosaurs with machine guns and Kurt Russell, which, hey, that version sounds cool, but you know what? Honestly, this movie is, this movie is so good the way it is that I'm fine with this version, too. And James Cameron, you know, he felt like he didn't want to go PG-13, so it's like, okay, you know, I'm fine with not doing this, uh, hand it over to someone else, and then, you know, Steven Spielberg got the job, and he he knocked it out the park with this movie. This, in my opinion, this is honestly, I feel, his best movie. Now, most people would say Jaws, uh, and I like Jaws. I, I do like the movie Jaws. A lot of people say that's Steven Spielberg's best movie, but for me, I prefer this one because... Believe it or not, this was the first Steven Spielberg movie I ever watched. And uh, I'd like to say I was around five years old at the time of this. And also, the production, uh, does, uh, the production, uh, there was a lot of troubled production filming this movie because during the scenes at nighttime when it was raining, there was a bunch of hurricanes that messed up scheduling conflicts. So overall, uh, production, um, you know, the production didn't go over so well and there was many production issues and it's surprising the movie turned out as good as it did with all those so and you know like and there's many uh this is the blu-ray here uh i mean i'm still gonna keep this around i mean i don't really need it anymore but i'm still gonna keep it around and you might ask why that is it's because let me grab it here where did the dvd go because at Walmart, I bought the DVD set that comes with all five of these. Comes with Jurassic Park, the first one. The Lost World, the Lost World Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park 3. Jurassic World. And Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. Now, I did see Jurassic World Dominion. And it is out on DVD now. So, I do need to pick up the DVD at some point. But, uh... Really cool slip cover. You see, uh, you see the lava here, uh, kind of lot molten lava crust. Uh, that's a pretty cool slip cover, but, uh, <laughs> I know almost five minutes in and I haven't gotten into the actual review itself. So, but I just wanted to get a lot off my chest. So, uh, let's get into it, shall we? Uh, the movie starts off on, uh, on the island. Uh, it starts off on the island, uh, Isla Nublar and, uh, it starts off on Isla Nubar, and I like the, sorry, I like the tame, I, I honestly like the tame, the time, so, ugh, I like the tagline of this movie, 65 million years in the making, because, you know, that's when dinosaurs became extinct, so, uh, and, you know, I thought that was a pretty cool tagline they used for this movie, so, 
and uh, critics praised it. Uh, Roger Ebert liked it, who was a beloved film critic. He liked it, but he didn't feel like... St uh, Roger Ebert said that it was a good movie, but he doesn't feel like it was as good as it could have been considering how great Jaws is, which I, I'm sorry. I like you, Roger Ebert, and I'm glad you at least liked the movie, but I don't agree with that statement at all. I think this is just as equally good as... Uh, other Spielberg movies, but, uh, you know, hey, it's his opinion, you know, but if that's your opinion, I, I'm sorry, I know I shouldn't be saying that, rest in peace, Roger Ebert, even if I disagreed, he was still a great critic, well, he was hit or miss, but I like some of his reviews, but, uh, rest in peace, Roger Ebert, uh, but I'm getting off tangent here, so the movie starts off with, uh, the movie starts off on uh, Isla Nubar, the, you know, the island where the dinosaurs are at. There's a bunch of Jurassic Park workers, you know, they have their uniforms and suits. And then uh, and then you have Robert Muldoon, uh, played by Bob Peck, who's like, uh, raise the gates. It, no, he's like, uh, all right, we got to we got to keep this on, you know, guys, we got to keep this under control. You know, these raptors are dangerous. They could seriously hurt us. Uh and then he's like, raise the gates. And then one of the work co-workers is on top of there. And then the raptor runs and knocks him uh, knocks him off onto his feet. And then uh, Robert Muldoon uh, falls in the cage with the raptors. And then uh, it dra and the workers and it drags him away. He's like, what's happening? And then, you know, uh, and then he sees the raptor looking at him. And I'll be honest, this scene actually scared me as a kid. But I still liked the movie, even as a kid, regardless, when the raptor just stares at him. And then he's like, shoot. Uh. And then, you know, it cuts to, uh, it cuts to, uh, and then it cuts to, uh, to Ray Arnold. Uh, wait, no, not Ray Arnold. It cuts to, uh, Donald DeNaro, uh, the, the lawyer who, you know, he's riding on like this sort of raft type of thing. Like, you know, it's a small sort of raft you know he goes over and then you know these pale and then it cuts to a scene where there's these paleontologists in a tunnel and uh they find this uh mosquito uh trapped in amber and they're like you know hey this is really special this could really change uh the way we see paleontology and then it cuts to a scene in uh, the badlands south dakota when uh our two main characters uh dr alan grant and and all and Ellie Sattler played by Sam Neill and Laura Dern when uh they're dusting off a, Velo a Velociraptor skeleton uh and then I like the whole it's kind of funny I I kind of like this part I like this part when uh when you know Dr. Alan Grant's talking about the uh he's talking about what the Velociraptor is uh six foot deadly predator uh uh, it stands for bird of prey. The kid's like, that doesn't sound very scary. More like a six foot turkey. And then everyone laughs at him, mocking him. And then he's like, uh, the raptor slashes at you with this. And he pulls out a claw roughly the size of my finger here. And then the kid has a terrified expression on his face like, uh, get that away from me. He said, he could attack here or here. <laughs> and then he's spilling a... Uh, or right across the belly spilling your intestines and he's like he says to the kid try to show a little respect he's like okay <laughs> like you know he's like okay I, I can't really argue with you i always even as a kid i always thought that scene was funny and then uh and then you know ellie sattler and uh and sam neil they go into uh the camper and then uh and then you have dr uh you got dr hammond you got uh Dr. Hammond, uh, played by Richard Attenborough, rest in peace, such a great actor, he died in 2014, but I, I've seen him in some other movies, and I like Richard Attenborough, I think he's a really good actor, it's sad he passed away, but he's really good in this, and he plays, uh, he plays, uh, Dr., uh, in this movie, he plays, uh, he plays John Hammond, and I thought he did an excellent job, and then, and then, you know, uh, and then, uh, Dr. Alan Grant's like, hey, what are you doing in her camper? And then he pops off uh, a cork off a, a beer bottle or alcohol bottle or whatever. And he was like, uh, I was having a treat. And he's like, what are you doing in her camper? And then he and then, you know, he tells him, you know, I built this place with real dinosaurs called Jurassic Park and it's going to be a huge exhibition. 
and they're like really but you know they decide to go on the island uh and then we're introduced to ian malcolm played by jeff goldblum and i like the fly many people consider the fly a great movie and i hear uh, i know my friend my mom's friend andy i know it's his favorite jeff goldblum role and the Fly is fantastic. It's a fantastic David Cronenberg movie. Yeah, you know, I do need to review that movie at some point. I would like to review it, but uh, I, I like The Fly. That's probably my second favorite Jeff Goldblum movie, but this is my personal favorite, and I think he does an excellent job, not only with his performance, but his character. And he is like, uh, did you dig up dinosaurs? He's like, uh, what? Did you, uh, did you find dinosaurs? And then uh, Dr. Alan Grant's like, we tried to. And then they uh, land on the island with the airplane. And then, you know, the no, 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 no soundtrack. I'm sorry. I'm horrible. I can't do soundtracks. Uh, but you know, if if you've seen this movie, you know what it is. But I would I would show clips in this review, but I'm not going to do that. I, I decided I'm not going to because apparently Universal Studios is very strict with copyright, even if they... A little footage is fine, but if you have too much of it, y your review could get taken down and copyright. And I don't want to get copywritten all over this review, so not going to happen. Sorry, but it is, oh well, it is what it... And it's such BS because Cinema uh, Cinema Wins is a YouTube channel, and they, they did an entire video on uh, everything great about Jurassic Park. They had... Most of the video was footage... But yet somehow, that was like two years ago or something, and yet somehow that video is fine, but other YouTubers' videos get taken down. That's such BS. Yeah, it goes to show you, it goes to show you how BS the studio is, how someone who has more footage gets to keep their video and others don't. It's such stupid, but I'm getting off tangent here. And then you, we have the part on the island with... Uh, and Ellie Sattler's looking at a map. She's like, you know, telling Dr. Alan Grant of uh, this... I've never seen anything like this. And then, you know, Dr. Alan Grant sees a huge brachiosaurus. And then he, he shows her and, like she's wowed and surprised at what she sees. And then you have the iconic quote by uh, Je by uh, by John Hammond, played by Richard Attenborough. Welcome to Jurassic Park. And then you see all the other dinosaurs walking. And it's really well done, practical effects. That, yes, there's a bit of CG in there, but it's CG used well. And the effects still hold up almost 30 years later. Uh, yeah, that's how good the effects still hold up in this movie. That I honestly think m more movies need to use practical effects. That's what I'm going to say. But, uh, and then, you know, uh, we cut to... Uh, Yo, know, they get inside a building, you know, the Jurassic Park building, you know, there's a T-Rex skeleton, and then we're introduced to Lex and Tim, which are the two kids, uh, Joseph Mozello plays, uh, Tim, and for some reason, I can't think of the actress who plays, uh, uh, who plays Lex right now, but, uh, I think she, I thought, I thought, you know, for kid, you know, honestly, for kid actors, they did a fantastic job in this movie, and, I did not find the I did I personally I did not find these kids annoying or irritating and I mean many people love this movie I mean this movie made a billion dollars worldwide and it got many fantastic reviews by critics and I can see why because it's my favorite movie and and then the and then uh, the kids are like grandpa he's like kids and then the kids run and tackle him he's like oh <laughs> but like you know you know obviously still happy to see them. And then we cut to a scene with a, a tour guide when uh, when Ellie Sattler and Dr. Alan Grant are sitting. They're basically sitting in uh, kind of like kind of like a moving theater, but not really because the seats are not really moving up and down. It's just it's more so the platform moving to the left side. And they see a video presentation on like, uh, you know, how they brought these dinosaurs back uh, using uh, dinosaur DNA. They how they used a. Uh, they found a uh, chicken eggs. Uh, they found eggs and used a uh, took a little bit of uh, mosquito and uh, DNA from amber and frog, but put them into frog eggs. And you know that's how they brought dinosaurs back. And uh, pretty self explanatory. That honestly, I even as a kid, as complex as sci fi plots can be, I was never confused by this subplot as a kid. Like. Granted, I I mean, I was only five, so obviously I did not know a lot about science, but 
it was explained well enough in the way to where even as a kid, I never got confused by that explanation. I didn't. And then, you know, they're like, you know, hey, and then uh, Dr. Alan Grant's like, is there any way we can get out these seats? And then, you know, they lift up the uh, kind of like the handles holding them down. And then uh, they eventually walk through a door and then we're introduced to Dr. Henry Wu, uh, played by DJ, uh, B. Day Wan, who who would eventually be in the Marvel movies. Uh, uh, as Dr. Strange assistant. Yeah, uh. B. Day Wan would play Doctor Strange uh, assistant in uh, Doctor Strange 2016 in the Multiverse of Madness. Uh, he appears in here as a scientist, Dr. Henry Wu. And then, you know, uh, John Hammonds uh, comes across a baby velociraptor egg. He's like, push, push. And then it pushes out. And then, uh, and then you know, uh, they, uh, you know they're, uh, they think it's cute, but like, you know, they're uh, surprised at what they see. And then, you know, Dr. Alan Grant asked Dr. Henry Wu, uh, you know, hey, uh, what type of uh, dinosaur is this? And he says, Velociraptors. He's like, he said, uh, we genetically modified them. All of them are females. He's like, this is a Velociraptor. And he shakes his head. And then, you know, it cuts to a scene where there's a cow hanging over, uh, kind of a crane lifting up a cow attached to a strap, I guess you could say. And then these Velociraptors brutally kill it. And uh, yeah, obviously it's not shown because it's PG-13. And, you know, there's only so much you can get away with a PG-13 rating. But the bushes shake around and you can hear the noises. So you get a good idea of how brutal it was. And then the, and then the crane lifts back up with only the strap. So, yeah. And then these conversations keep going on as to, like, you know... Yo, know, just because we can bring them back, does that mean we should, you know, stuff like that. And then we cut to a scene with our character, uh, with uh, Lex, uh, Lex and Tim and Dr. Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler and Jeff Goldblum, you know, they're going in cars, you know, and, uh, and like, I like the whole, uh, and then, you know, they're, they're going on this ride and, uh, not really a ride, like a roller coaster, but these cars that are, kind of control themselves on their own with a track to go on, I guess you could say, where, you know, they're they're in shock and awe. But, like, I like the whole scene when uh when Lex shows up and Dr. Alan Grant, you know, he, like, I just like his character because he hates kids, but yet he has to eventually save them and learn to get used to them. I Even as a kid, I thought that character arc was pretty cool. And, uh, you know, Lex goes up to him and he keeps saying these facts and he keeps getting annoyed. And then he just closes the door on him, but he still keeps talking regardless. And then, you know, they're on the car ride. They learn about the Dilophosaurus, a poison spitting dinosaur, which would eventually return in Jurassic World Dominion, which, like I said, I'm doing these reviews more in depth and I'll get to that review when I get to it. But, uh, and then, you know, they... And then, like, uh, you know, the characters get out the car, except for, uh, uh, there's a part where the characters get out the car, except for, uh, Ian Malcolm, and Ian Malcolm's like, I'm just, now I'm just in a car alone, talking to myself, <laughs> and then it cuts to, uh, a scene where there's a built-in camera, and then, you know, John Hammond's watching it, and then, uh, Ian Malcolm is like, uh, hello, <sighs> is this day <thing> not, <laughs> and then I like the whole scene where, uh, where, where, uh, where, where John Hammond's like, I really hate that man. And then, you know, they find the sick triceratops and, uh, Ellie Sattler, like, uh, you know, she decides to take care of it. But like, there's the iconic quote where there's a bunch of dino crap. And then, uh, Ian Malcolm's like, that's one big pile of S word. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, and then, you know, they're digging in it, but you know, obviously with, uh, plastic gloves, uh, and then he's like, and then I like the whole part where Ian Malcolm's like, uh, you might want to wash your hands before eating. And then, you know, it starts thunderstorming and, uh, Ellie Sattler says, I'll stay here with the Triceratops. You guys go ahead. And, you know, they do. And then it's, uh, and then, you know, the characters get back in their cars and, uh, there's a part with Alex and Tim where, uh, they're sitting in a car with night vision goggles. Well, well, you know, Tim is, but before then, you know, it's the daytime, they, they're going to the T-Rex paddock, and there's a goat, and they wait for hours, but the car stopped, and then it's eventually dark at nighttime, and then Tim uses night vision goggles, he says, look what I found, and then, you know, uh, Dr. DeNaro, the mayor's like, are they heavy? He's like, 
yes, then they're expensive, put them back. And then he stares, and then he sees that the goat is gone, and then uh, Lex is like, I don't get it, where's the goat? And then the bloody, and then there's a really bloody decapitated leg of a goat that lands on top of the car. And then, you know, the kids, uh, and you know, honestly, I would probably feel this way if I were in the same situation. They're scared and shocked, which honestly, I would be too. Because I mean, if you just saw a bloody decapitated leg, you, none of you can tell me in the comment section that if you saw a bloody decapitated leg fall on the top of your car windshield that you would not be scared. I'm pretty sure everyone would say yes, but, uh, and then the T-Rex is eating the goat, then it stares at the car, really beautiful cinematography, it's really dark out at night, and then it's raining and stuff like that, and then, uh, it cuts to the part when, uh, and then, you know, uh, the T-Rex breaks open the electrical fence, and then it lets out a, a loud roar, and then, uh, but before then, Ian Malcolm and, uh, and Dr. Alan Grant feel vibrations and they know what it is. And then uh, Ian Malcolm's like, I hate I hate being right all the time. And the T-Rex roars again. And the kids have the light on. But, you know, they're trying to turn it off. And, uh, and the T-Rex is walking towards the car. And then, uh, and then Dr. Alan Grant's whispering, turn the light off, turn the light off. And then, you know, uh, and then Tim closes the door, but the T-Rex stares at him. And then, uh, and then, uh, T uh, Lex is terrified holding a flashlight. Then the T-Rex looks its eye at it. And then it roars and it, uh, there's this, uh, glass, uh, window at the top of the car. It tries to break it open and it almost kills the kids. So to save, uh, to save the kids, Dr. Alan Grant has to, uh, has to go out the car with, uh, Kind of like a a flare type of dyn a type of dynamite flare stick something like that and then you know he's like hey and he yells at the T Rex to get its attention that way they have time to escape and the T and then you know uh, Ian Malcolm comes out the car with it and then he's like Ian freeze and then the T T Rex starts chasing him and but before then <laughs> I like the part when the mayor gets scared and he runs into the bathroom and then <laughs> and then uh. The Dr. Alan Grant's like, where's he going? And then Jeff Goldblum is like, well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> and then the T-Rex, yeah, there's the iconic scene where the T-Rex kills him on the toilet. And then, you know, it flips the car over, over, it's raining, it's muddy, and the kids are covered in mud that the T-Rex has flipped the car over. And then, you know, the kids get uh, manage to make it out, but this is an editing flaw that I do notice, but... It doesn't really bother me, so I'm not going to consider it a negative, but uh, there's the whole part where somehow the, uh, the the ground just disappears on the other side of the paddock, but it's a movie. It's only like oh, like a minute or two, so yeah, I can, for a movie that's very accurate, despite a few, histor uh, few inaccuracies, I mean, I'm in as long as I enjoyed the movie and I enjoyed the cast, I can look past it, and here I can look past it where the car's dangling, it almost hits both Lex and Dr. Alan Grant, but they get out the way holding on to a rope, and uh, Lex is stuck in the car, no, Tim is stuck in the car, Dr. Alan Grant has to go save him, he's like, I threw up, it's like, it's okay, I get you're scared, all of that, but before then, like, I like the whole part at nighttime when they have to cut the power, and Dennis Nedry, uh, uh, Wayne Knight, I thought, did a great job playing this character. I'm not going to discuss him as a real person because he's a terrible person. Like, if you know what he did, if you know, you know, and if you don't, do some research. But I'm not going to discuss that here. But anyways, you know, he's like, uh, he has a Barbasol can with him and, you know, he has to cut the power to the place. And then he comes across a Dilophosaurus and he's like, ha ha, that's nice. I, I, I gotta go. <laughs> and then, uh, and then he grabs a, a stick. He's like, here, here's the stick, stupid. Stick. He's like, he grabs a stick. You want food? Look, I don't have any food. Stick, stick, stick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stick, stick, stupid. Fetch the stick. No wonder you're extinct. I'm going to run you over when I get back down. But before he can get up, the Dilophosaur spits poison at him. And then it gets him in the eyes. And then he uh, he tries to run in the car. But uh, he hits the car door and he, uh, he slips down the waterfall. You know, because he was over a slight waterfall edge. And uh, and then he gets back in the car and the Dilophosaur finds a way in there and it kills him off screen. But it's 
The book goes more in detail with it, and I like the book, but one of the issues I have with the book is that they killed off Ian Malcolm in the book, which I don't like that they did that, but aside from that, it's a great book, but the, I know the movie's different from the book, but both the book and movie got great reviews, and many people love it, so there you go, and then, you know, and then it cuts to the part with, uh, with Laura Dern, uh, Sam Neill, wait, no, <laughs> Laura Dern... No, I keep saying the actors. It cuts to Ellie Sattler, uh, John Hammond. Not John Hammond. Uh, it cuts to Dr. Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, and Ian Malcolm. And then Ian Malcolm's like, you know, they feel vibrations. It's like, come on, we gotta go right now, right now. Let's go. And then, you know, uh, they drive the car away and the T-Rex chases them and it almost gets them. But where the T-Rex runs into a tree branch and they manage to outrun it. And then, you know, the kids, you know, they eventually get to safety or they get, you know, I like the whole part when Dr. Alan Grant is walking with them at nighttime and, uh, you know, it's really beautiful scenery. They wa they decide to sleep in a tree and then sometime in the night, uh, you know, Lex is woken up by this brontosaurus, uh, brachiosaurus uh, eating this, uh, eating leaves, you know, because, you know, they're not dangerous to people. And then, uh, and then Lex gets scared. She's like, go away. And then Dr. Alan Grant's like, it's okay. They're just herbivores. It means they only eat plants. He said, and then what? <laughs> and then uh, Tim makes a smart Alec comment saying, yeah, but I think you're the exception and they'll eat you. And, th and then she just rolls his eyes at him. And he is like, they're not dangerous. And then he is like, and then, you know, there's, and then it cuts to a scene with, uh, it cuts to a scene with uh, them, and walking in the morning, you know, uh, walking, they find these eggs and they're like, they use frog DNA, all that stuff, and that we could be in serious danger. And then it cut, and then, you know, the kids eventually go back to the building and, uh, and then Doc and Ellie Sattler and John Hammond are having a discussion at night, you know, how it, we can't, we, we can't keep this park open. It's too dangerous. But he's like, we just need to get it under control. But she's like, no. And, and, you know, understandable, because, I mean, <laughs> if you watch the movie, look at how much damage has been done already. Like, even your electric fences didn't work, so there you go. And then, you know, and then it cuts to a scene with uh, with Robert Muldoon, uh, played by Bob Peck, where uh, he, where he's like, uh, he tells Ellie Sattler, run, you know, get out of here. I think that's a good thing to do, and she does it. And then he has this uh, assault rifle and he's about to, he's hunting for these velociraptors because he sees one in his vision. But then one of them, one of them uh, sneaks, uh, well, he doesn't see a velociraptor, but he aims a gun in a direction in case it comes his way. But it surprises him and goes behind him and he sees it. He's like, clever girl. And the thing attacks and kills him. And then a really cool shot where there's a snake on top of a log and the velociraptor staring at it. And then, you know, it, and you know, Ellie Sattler is running the building. She's like, you know, she, and then, you know, John Hammond co tells her, you need to put the power back on. And it cuts to Lex, Tim, and Dr. Alan Grant. You know, they're about to climb this electrical fence because it's not, you know, it's not on. But I like this whole part where it's pretty funny where, uh, Dr. Alan Grant decides to scare the kids. He takes this, uh, he puts his hand on the electric fence and, uh, he pretends he's being shot. He's like, Duh! and the kids scream. And then he looks at them smiling. And then Lex is like, that's not funny. And then Tim's like, that was great. And then, you know, they manage to climb up it. And then, you know, and then eventually the alarm goes on, you know, because the power's about to be turned on. And then, uh, and then Dr. Alan Grant's like, I'm going to give you to the count of three to get done. You're one, two, three. And he gets shocked. And, you know, they're doing CPR and he gets back and he's fine. And then it cuts to the it cuts to those three characters. They see Gallimimus, a type of predatory dinosaur. A huge herd of them running their way. Then the T Rex kills them. But you know, Lex, Tim, and Doctor Alan Grant are hiding. And then Doctor Alan Grant's like, "Look, uh, look at the way it eats. Can we just get out of here?" Uh, Lex says. And then he's like, "Okay." And then Tim is like, "Oh, look at that! So much blood." <laughs> and then they get away. And then you know, uh. And then, you know, once uh, they're done, you know, they, they get back. And then, you know, Dr. Alan Grant tells them, you know, hey, kids, I need you to stay in the building while we get this stuff figured out, uh, get this stuff figured out. You know, they agree. 
and then it cuts to a scene where they're eating jello and all sorts of other food. Uh, it looked like a fancy meal, I'll say that. And then it's one, this creates one of the most uh, tension-filled scenes in any movie where uh, the Velociraptors, uh, they see their shadow walking in the building like, you know, they need they know, you know, that we need to go hide or or we're pretty much screwed. Well, I forgot to mention this earlier. I keep going off tangent here, but uh, bear with me. Samuel L. Jackson plays a character in this movie named Ray Arnold. I like the whole part when uh, they're trying to get the power back, uh, trying to power the place down when uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character's trying to get it powered down. And then the computer's like, ah, 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 you didn't say the magic word. He's like, please, God dang it, I hate this place. <laughs> And then I just like that scene. Sam, you know, Samuel L. Jackson's great in this movie. This is my favorite Samuel L. Jackson movie. I'm just saying. And then, uh, and then, uh, doc, and then you know, uh, and then once the power gets back on, uh, Ellie Sattler's like, I think we're back at business. Then there's a jump scare or effective one where Velociraptor jumps behind her and it tears the fence apart. And then she's trying to run away from it. And then the bloody decapitated arm of Ray Arnold, played by Samuel L. Jackson, lands on him. And, like, it's a really bloody scene. For a movie that was PG-13, this movie pushes it in some scenes. And then, you know, she runs away. And then, you know... And then we have the scene with Lex and Tim in the kitchen. They're hiding from the Velociraptors. And, uh... And then they go... Ugh. They make a sound. I can't imitate it. I'm I'm going to try to stop doing that. I'm horrible at imitations. But if you've seen the movie, you know what I mean. And then when that happens, uh, you know, they they manage to sneak around the place. And they're, they're crawling on the ground. And the Velociraptor whips its tail. And a bunch of frying pans hit them. And then you know, they hide behind another one. And then at the worst possible time, a spoon falls off uh, a hainer. A large uh, cooking spoon. And then the Velociraptors jump on top of a table searching for them. And then, you know, Lex uses, uh, slaps one on the ground, but uh, hides herself as a distraction to get one of their attention. And then, you know, she's hiding in this, uh, kind of like, uh, an oven, I guess you could say, but it has a reflector. She reflects it to the other edge to make it look like that of uh, the Velociraptors chasing her. But it, she gets out, and then the Velociraptor runs into a different part. I've always liked that scene. And then they run and get out of the kitchen. And then, you know, they meet up with the main characters, Dr. Alan Grant, Ellie Sattler, uh, you know, all the, those characters. And then, uh, and then you know, Lex and Tim are climbing in the, not really air vents, but like, I guess, uh, top of upstairs, I guess you could say. But with... Uh, a metal floor, uh, they're crawling, and then the Velociraptor pops its head out, and, like, holding, uh, Lex there, and then she screams, and then, uh, Dr. Alan Grant's awesome, he kicks one in the face and knocks it to its, uh, feet, and then he pulls up Lex, but the Velociraptor was very close to biting her foot off, but he got her out in time, and she was fine, and then they run, and then they find the room, uh, from earlier in the movie with, uh, the fossils of the dinosaurs, and then they climb on, uh, on like this platform close to it and then the velociraptors start chasing them they uh jump on top of a t-rex skeleton but the it's hanging from wires so it doesn't break right away and you know they're hanging off the edge with uh with it taken apart and then uh tim almost dies with uh the rib cage of a t-rex almost stabbing him uh the fossil one but it misses him and he manages to survive and then, you know, uh, the Velociraptors keep chasing the main characters. And, you know, they're trapped and cornered. And then I like the part where when one of the Velociraptors is about to kill them, the T-Rex kills it at the end. And uh, I like the soundtrack. No, 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 no. I'm no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Horrible impression. But uh, John Williams did the score. And John Williams... Great uh, st score. It's Sadie Gone. And Stan Winston did the special effects in this movie. Stan Winston did many great practical effects designs. If you're not familiar with his work, he designed the hands on Edward Scissorhands, uh, the design on the Predator's face and the Terminator. Just This guy's excellent at practical effects. He also did the design to uh, the Cathoga, the monster and the relic, a very underrated favorite of mine, which I... 
I did a review about a month or so ago. So if you direct it from director Peter Himes, a very underrated director, just if you want to watch my review, just go watch my my review. But uh, Leviathan's another great one. I need uh, that very underrated. I do need to review that at some point. But I'm getting off tangent here. And then uh, and then you know, all the characters run out the building. And then uh, Dr. Alan Grant says to John Hammond, after careful consideration, I've decided not to endorse your park. He's like, so have I. Uh, Dr. <coughs> John Hammond's like, so have I. And then the main characters get out of there. And then, you know, the characters are happy at the end. They're flying a helicopter, about to go home. But before they go, John Hammond just gives one more look. Very, very sad that he has to leave his park behind, but he understands it's for the best and safety of everyone. Then they get off in the helicopter, and there's the beautiful scenery at the end of the movie with uh, with the birds flying. And uh, and then, yeah, uh, the movie ends. No, 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 no. And then that soundtrack at the end. I'm sorry I said I wouldn't do it again. I'm horrible at impressions. But yeah, just one more can I say that no one has already said said about this movie like there's just so many great iconic moments in this movie there's also like the suspenseful scenes i mentioned as well as the other suspect i forgot to mention this the other suspenseful scene when uh the characters you know they're trying to get the power back online but uh they have to keep the door closed from the velociraptor but just awesome movie awesome ending perfect cast i know this review was a bit long but I just could not make it short. I had to go in depth with that. I mean, it's my favorite movie. And honestly, if you have not seen this movie, where have you been? Have you been living? Not, sorry, not to sound mean or anything, but like where, but I'm. my point is, is like, where have you been? Why have you not bothered watching this? If any of you watching have not seen this movie, this is a must watch. I don't know who hasn't, but if you haven't, then watch it. But yeah, uh, that was my review for Jurassic Park. It gets a 10 out of 10, and I'll see you guys later for the rest of the reviews in this series. See you.